All right. Hi. Hello, everyone. Hope you're good. Hope you're well. Our topic will be demand, supply, and market equilibrium. What we'll do is I'll focus this video on demand. I'll make a second video on supply, and then I'll bring it all together in a third video on market equilibrium. So let's get into it. The market forces. Demands and supply are the market forces that make economies work. But how do they do this? The quantity demanded is the amount in terms of number of a product people are willing to buy at a certain price. For example, say you want to buy pens and you walk into your local Tesco. You have £10 in your pocket. Pens are being sold at a price of £1 each. That means you can buy 10 pens. What happens if the price goes up to £2? It means you can afford to buy 5 pens this time, right? So you can see how the price is affecting the number of the products you're willing to buy. So the concept of quantity demanded is the amount in terms of number of a product people are willing to buy at a certain price. On the other hand, the quantity supplied is the amount also in terms of number of a product producers are willing to supply at a certain price. So Tesco is our supplier in this case. Now, how many pens would they be willing to supply at a price of one pound? And how many pens would they be willing to supply at the price of two pounds? You can see just by looking at the example that price is a reflection of supply and demand. So suppliers are looking at the price, customers as well are looking at the price. So price brings it all together. Let's talk about our market. Now, modern microeconomics is very concerned about supply, demand and market equilibrium. What is a market? A market is any arrangement that enables buyers and sellers to get information and do business with each other anywhere where these people buyers and sellers can exchange money for goods and services for instance your tesco your sainsbury's your aldi your farmer's market your fish market your wholesale market right but that's just not it think about online marketplaces like amazon like ebay all right any place where these people can get together and do business is called a market now normally they do business in terms of money all right so the money price of a good is the amount in terms of money pounds euros dollars yen rmb needed to buy that product now let's talk about effective demand for a minute now effective demand measures what customers are willing and able to purchase at each and every price in a given time period all other things unchanged so the key word here is willing and able, okay? I might be willing to buy a car. I might be willing to buy a yacht. I might be willing to buy a plane, but am I able to do it? If the answer is no, my demand is ineffective. So for you to have effective demand, you should be able to back it up with money, with dinero, with pounds, with naira, okay? With some cities, right? So that is what makes your demand effective quantity demanded will depend on certain things the obvious one being the price level so normally when price goes up what happens to demand falls down customers incomes so when your incomes increase right when you make more money right when you get a windfall when you have incomes um, demand usually increases as well so with an increase in customers incomes you usually have an increase in the de um, demand and the other way around as well the price of competitors products so substitute goods right these are goods where there's a lot of competition for instance coke and pepsi okay if the price of coke goes up coca-cola goes up right what will happen to the demand of pepsi right it might um, because the price of Coca-Cola has gone up, right? More people might want to substitute uh, Pepsi for Coke. So they're looking, why should I buy Coke at this at this price? Maybe I should get more of Pepsi. So you can see that relationship there as well. Price of complementary goods, okay? Complementary goods are goods you consume together, like um, cars 
and petrol like tea and uh, sugar okay if the price of sugar goes up my tea consumption might come down because that has become an expensive habit the number of customers in the marketplace right with more customers in the marketplace demand should go up and vice versa okay now let's talk about utility utility is the reason for demand so people men women boys and girls we go and buy things we engage in the marketplace because of the satisfaction we gain from consuming goods and services shopping might be a hobby but normally it's because when we shop or when we do something we gain satisfaction okay now the goal of your typical consumer is to maximize his or her utility subject to a budget or your income constraint so you have amount an amount of money and you want to increase your satisfaction and that is why you consume goods and services your total utility is the total satisfaction from consumption of that product your marginal utility is the extra or the marginal satisfaction you get from consuming a marginal or an extra unit of a product let's have this example here now look at our utility curves um we have total utility figure b to the right marginal utility figure a to the left let's look at this person when this person consumed one unit of this good or service person had a total utility of 10 all right when this person consumed two goods the person had a total utility of a person consumed um 18 sorry when the person consumed three goods, the person had total utility of 24. So what has happened to the marginal utility? Can you see the first time the marginal utility was 10, second time it was eight, third time it was six. So the extra additional utility, we've plotted it here on the left-hand side with your marginal utility. So first time marginal utility was 10, second time marginal utility was eight, right? third time marginal utility was six and you can see that the satisfaction keeps reducing to a point it actually becomes zero at six units and then it actually becomes negative so think about it your first ice cream is very satisfactory second one not as satisfactory as the first third one not as satisfactory as the second and on and on and on and at some point you're like this is ridiculous stop bringing bringing me ice cream please so that's the law of diminishing marginal utility. If you increase your consumption of another good, that might affect marginal utility in a different way. But in the short run, we have that relationship. Now, your law of demand states that all things being considered, normally there should be an inverse relationship between the price of good and demand. What does this mean? In other words, as prices fall, we should see an expansion of demand. So when prices fall, prices come down, demand should expand, demand should go up, right? If prices rise, so prices go up, there should be a contraction of demand. So demand goes down, all right? So you can see that relationship. It's an inverse relationship between price of a good and demand. This comes from your substitution effect. So your substitution effect happens because you're consuming more of the good that is uh, cheaper okay so you substitute for the cheaper good right so you, you substitute towards that cheaper good right and your income effect okay so as you earn more money you consume more of the goods that you like okay and less of the goods that you don't like all right this is your typical shape of your demand curve you can see it's an inverse relationship okay so um, changes in price would lead to a movement on the demand curve, right? On the demand curve, right? We'll see this in a minute and an extension and a contraction, right? So this is what we mean by uh, an extension or contraction, okay? So um, here we have, this is our first quantity, right? So at this quantity, this was our price, okay? When the uh, price increased from p1 to p2 right what happened to our quantity it reduced from q2 from q1 to q2 so that is a contraction of demand however if price should drop from p1 to p3 right we have an extension of demand so quantity moves increases from q1 to q3 all right but it's on the demand curve along the demand curve okay okay so 
um, this is caused by uh, uh, a, a movement on a demand curve. Later, I'll show you what a shift in demand looks like. Okay. All right. So I'll show you that in a bit. Okay. Here we have a shift in demand. So here you can see the price is still the same. So a P1, right? This is our quantity, right? But the demand curve has shifted to the right even though the price is still the same as opposed to the other one okay so here we've had a shift to the right okay and here we've had a shift to the left okay from um this point here we've had a shift to the left okay all right so you can see that this is, hasn't been caused by uh, a price it hasn't been caused by price okay so what happens is changes in price leads to a movement along the demand curve so up and down from the demand curve is caused by a change in price but a shift so if our demand curve moves from this one right and it moves to another one right here we have a shift so it's not caused by uh, uh, a change in in, in 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 price it's caused by other factors okay and we'll see that in a minute it could be um, substitute goods complementary goods but it's definitely not caused by price so up and down on the demand curve very important up and down on the demand curve is uh, a change in demand that is caused by price but a shift in demand so not up and down a shift is caused by other factors okay so what is a demand curve a demand curve shows a graphical representation of the demand schedule so remember what we said about the relationship between demand and price so normally price goes up demand comes down all right when you get all that data and you put it in a table you get a demand schedule just like we have right here so look at this demand schedule for price of tickets okay so when price of tickets was one dollar i would buy seven when it was two i would buy six it was three i would buy four right so you can see as price of tickets goes up the number goes down now let's draw this demand curve shall we i'm using a surface pro so it might not be exactly straight <laughs> but um yeah just pardon us so normally um if you do this on a sheet of paper or you do this uh, properly graph, you should get very good uh, lines, very good relationships. Um, on the X axis, on the uh, horizontal axis, we usually have number, okay, or quantity, right, or quantity. On the Y axis, we usually have price, okay. Let's put some numbers in. So we have zero, one two three four five six seven eight nine ten all right and this are the axis as well we can put one two three four five six seven eight nine ten okay now let's draw this so when the price of tickets was one dollar i'll buy seven apparently so price one two seven so somewhere here right so you match them up one seven draw my one there all the way all the way right so it's here right one to seven so we're there okay uh when it was two dollars i would buy six so two to six here right um three dollars i would buy four you can see uh quantity is reducing so three, four, here, right, okay. When it was uh, four, I'll buy three, four, three, okay. Um, when it was five, I'll buy two, five, two, okay, oopsie, could be straighter. Um, six, I'll buy one, six, one, okay. And then when it was um, seven, I wouldn't buy any. It would be zero. So right here on this axis. Now I can plot that. Draw it down. Draw it down. Oh, that's not a very straight line, is it? Ooh. But yeah, there you have it. 
that is my demand curve for this schedule. So your class activity is to draw the demand curve for Jill. Okay. Please draw the demand curve for Jill and also define the market demand curve. So what is a market demand curve? Okay. So do this um, two activities and I will see you on the other side. Peace. All right. <laughs> Be cool. Bye.